all the books. Hey, hey, it's time for book reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to Fort Monsters Blanc for the Warhammer 40,000 gaming system created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to book review number 91 of this vlog. Today I'm going to be reviewing the short story called Extinction, the full novel called Talon of Horrors, and then another short story called The Wonder Worker, all three written by Aaron Dansky Bowden. We can begin with Extinction as a short story and its front cover. Extinction was first released in the Games Day Anthology 2012-2013 and shows us the, exactly what the title hints at. We see that the Sons of Horus Legion slowly dies in a series of short scenes as they are hated and hunted down by their former allies of the other eight traitor legions. It sets up a good picture of the setting of what will later play out in the Talon of Horus novel. The short is worth 8 out of 10 forks, and what could have made it even better is perhaps that it would have been longer, but other than that it's just great. Then we can talk about the Talon of Horus front cover. I simply love it as we see the powerful Abaddon in his full glory preparing to lead his warrior into battle and doom the Imperium of Man. Definitely eye catching and I think it deserves a 9 out of 10 forks. So in this story we see everything through the eyes of Secondary Cain, a former thousand sons who after the rubric of Araman also is a fugitive from his former brothers. He is accompanied by a number of individuals, a dark elf Eldar Scorch, his demon tutelary by the name of Gyre in the form of a Fenrisian wolf, Ashur Kai, Kesrema, the White Seer and a big amount of Rubike. They are sought out by Falco Skyber, a Sons of Horrors we so first saw in the novel Horus Rising. They meet on neutral ground and are accompanied by a warband of former world eaters led by Leorvine Leor Urkis. Falcus Kyber tells them that the last fortress of the Sons of Horus has fallen and the body of Horus has been stolen by the Emperor's children's former chief apothecary Fabius Bile. With the body in their possession, it is feared that the Emperor's children won't be far from cloning the Primarch and with the Primarch at the forefront they could win the Legion Wars. All of the meeting Astartes agrees that the time of the Primarchs are over and they are either dead or ascended by this time. Falcos then say that they are seeking out the former flagship of his legion, the Vengeful Spirit, and with it he believes they can strike back at the Emperor Children. The meeting is cut short when an armada of Emperor Children arrives in the system and demands that they turn over Falcos Kyber. Everyone else is allowed to live if they do so. Cain tries to help them, but a detachment of Emperor's children interrupts this. As the degenerate sons of Fulgrim boards the ship, Cain is, is forced to cast the bound demon called the Ragged Knight, who starts to on, uh, go out on a murder massacre. Of the Emperor's children, only one survives, which is Telemachon Lyrus, which will become just as much of the, a brother to Cain as his nemesis. What I liked about this part is that it's finally shown and confirmed that there are demons which aren't bound to any of the gods, but more a remnant of a terrible event which stirred up horrible emotions. As they manage to escape, it is decided that they will go on a quest to find the vengeful spirit. A word bearer apostle who is in the company of Falcus Kyber prior to the battle tells them that the only way for them to find this ship is through a place where not even demons venture. Why they don't go there is because it's a place where the Astromanicum shines its light. As they travel through the zone, they encounter another entity of the warp, a representation of the Emperor's song, sung through the Astronomicum. I, I really like this part as it shows other reflections in the warp other than demons, meaning that other things have reflections within the warp. So, as they manage to pass through this passage, they do find the vengeful spirit hidden away within a canyon on an uninhabited planet. This is also when Ab Abaddon makes his first appearance in the book. The pilgrimage, which is slightly shown in, in Extinction, we see that he is not the same person as he was before. Long gone is the hot-headed commander, but the wise leader remains instead. He agrees with the newly arrived that the Horus cannot be reborn and they should start a new legion not controlled by the Emperor or following blindly Horus' orders. They should start a legion based upon the bonds of brotherhood. A legion not based in the Great Crusade, but that of the Long War. They come up with a plan to strike back at the Emperor's children at what a place called Canticle City, 
and Abaddon takes up the mantle of, of returning back. They drop out in the system and slingshot Kane's old ship with crash lands into the shitty and destroys it completely. They seek out Fabius Bile's personal ship and boards it. On board they find the mutated creatures of Primar clones, none of them even remotely close to their original state. It is then they are faced with Bile himself and his most perfect creation. He managed to clone Horus in a perfect replica. A battle erupts where the main characters are at disadvantage. One of the rubrique, Kane's former best and oldest friend, gains a moment of clarity and sacrifices himself for Kane. This is a beautiful moment and this is what I think John French missed completely in his Aram and Sorcerer novel. How can you make a character who is made out of stone and says only one sentence be so missed as he dies? The answer is that you, you see it through the reflection of his friends and those how, how they interpret him. If they miss him, if they see him as a good friend, then we as a reader will just feel that as well. It is handled through the eyes of people outside and their reactions more or less. We actually cared for his sacrifice. But it ends with Abaddon who kills Horus and delivers the most epic one-liner ever as he cuts off all ties with his former Primarch. What's really great about this book is, way, is the way it's told, not the events it portrays, even though they are awesome as well. My favorite thing about it is the glimpse of it offers of an Abaddon man who would willingly follow through hell for 10,000 years out of brotherhood and loyalty, not just only fear, ambition or hatred of the Imperium. A leader and a genuine hero, albeit one willing to commit any atrocity to achieve his goal. But that glimpse unfolds over multiple chapters. I also love the way Aaron Dansky Bowden portrays the Eye of Terror and shows the stuff that goes on within the warp. The way he describes that the warp is actually just an empty room, but because of human imagination, things are created. Like all rooms are empty, but the moment we enter it, it creates all surfaces and everything within it. So, what did I think about this novel? Well. I love the way that Aaron Deskibaden portrays the Eye of Terror and the stuff that goes on within the war. I also love the way that the characters are portrayed. He gives justice to both the portrayals of all the cult legions as they cut their former ties. This is truly the greatest book to show the true face of the Black Legion's origins. This book has everything and the only thing I could ask more of is, is in the next novel, hopefully. And everything I mentioned is just a small tidbit of how awesome it is. This novel I will gladly give 10 out of 10 forks. Now we can continue with The Wonder Worker, the short story. We can continue with the limited edition short story called The Wonder Worker. The Wonder Worker is a short story set between the Talon of Horus and the Black Legion. It opens up with the narrative of Secondar Kane, who goes through that he remembers everything he has been through, but he chooses to remember all events through special moments. He recalled a number of attempts Telemachon has tried to take his life for instance, and how many times he has tried to do the same in return. He seems spiteful that he is captured while Telemachon is commanding his fleet. He also imagines it would feel like a nail in the eye of the Inquisition that he surrendered himself and was not captured in battle. One Inquisitor in particular by the name of Soroka was more persistent than others. She wonders what happens after the events in the novel. He answers that they licked their wounds and came to meet with Charis Terranok, also known as the Wonder Worker of Ansu and Thaumaturg, a title of Hekka. He doesn't believe that this is Secondur, as anyone could wear his face and neither the Fenrisen Wolf Demon of nor the Dark Eldar were anywhere near to be seen. Geir's physical form were destroyed and Nefitari were nearly killed, leaving them out of the story. They have a very interesting discussion and wordplay as Terranok doesn't trust him. Secondary takes forward his collections of demons in form of tarot cards. Handing over one of the cards proves who he really is. The card is called the Huntress. After the encounter, the Wonder Worker is invited up to the Vengeful Spirit where they see actual spirits in the walls. 
On board, he is requested to see the body of Sanguinius immortalized in something called a Psy Crystal, lying in the Lupercal's court. It's a really powerful moment to visit this part, as this is where the end of the heresy took place. Kane says that during the discussion with Ashur Kai, they come to the conclusion that, that all that the Vengeful Spirit remembers all who died on board. Terranok then replies that Horus should have been around there somewhere, but Kane answers that Horus wasn't merely killed by the Emperor, his whole being was erased from existence. He agrees to build a weapon for Kane, but he needs some raw materials. Kane presents to him the blood of the clone Primarchs, shards of the Worldbreaker, the maul of Horus Lupercal, the ashes of Imperius, the solar priest and avatar of the Astro Astronomicon which were killed in the novel, and lastly the sword of Sanguinius, or one third of it as the other parts were given to Telemachon who made it a new death mask and Leor who used it for his chain weapons. In order to make a force weapon he still needs physical resonant materials. I think by that moment Kane breaks the scene of Sanguinius into small glass pieces. This follows to explore the character of Wonderworker, which expands a little bit of who he is. He presents a new sword to Kane. In return he asks to join their newly formed warband, but he doesn't know what he is joining. Kane says that they intend to sail to the Lupercalius and any former of Sons of Horus who doesn't swear field to them is to be killed. Wonderworker then realizes that he would have been killed if he had failed with his task. And no matter the outcome, Kane will take his rubriquet as he is, will be the master of the Ashen Dead in this new legion. The Wonder Worker kneeled to Kane, the first one of the Black Legion to ever do so. And there it ends. So, what did I think about this short story? Well, I think it is a fantastical short story that expands upon the characters in between the novels. It's the right amount of length uh, that even though I would always love longer stories from Aaron Dusk about them. I love the portrayals and everything. I will give this short story 10 out of 10 forks. And with that I will conclude this book review. Thank you very much for watching this book review and don't forget to rate and subscribe to my channel. Please give a thumbs up on my videos and also leave comments on things I'm doing good so I keep on doing them. And leave negative critique of things I'm doing bad so you need to improve or remove the content entirely. And also don't forget to share this with your friends if it could be interesting, entertaining or simply inspiring. And I'm also on Facebook these days, there's a link down in the description. Check it out and see if you like it. I try and update more regularly there than I do here on YouTube, not by much, but a little to make a difference. But with that said, thank you very much for watching this book review. Death to the False Emperor. Bye!